Hey guys, it's Mr. Bison here. And if you didn't know this already, I am taking all of the maths and further maths A-level exams this summer, which is 13 in total. And as part of this video series, I wanted to take you behind the scenes of how I am preparing to do this in the hope that it might give you some tips about preparing for your A-level exams as well. Now, why have I been prompted to make this first update? Well, on Friday, I received my exam timetable. It was 16 years ago that I got my exam timetable for my A-levels, and here I am again. I suddenly feel like this is all quite real. It's quite a weird experience now thinking in a few months time I will be in that same exam hall as you guys. And the thing I'm not looking forward to is Monday the 24th of June because I have four exams which are all further maths. It's decision two, further mechanics two, further stats two and further pure two. And those are the hardest exams that I think for me they're going to be because I know very little of most of these exams. If you asked any maths teacher, are you ready to take all of further maths A level? They would probably say, yeah, I could do like one or two modules. But to be able to do all of them is a big challenge, whether you covered it at university or not. And so what I wanted to do is kind of tell you a bit about how I've been learning some of that new stuff to maybe give you some ideas about how that could help you with learning the normal A-level content or further maths content as well. If you didn't know, I've been making videos for all of these option modules for the members section of my channel. And the one I'm currently working on is FP2. So I wanted to use this as a bit of an example to tell you how I've been doing that preparation. Now within the further pure two module, there are kind of three sorts of areas. There's the stuff that I did when I was 18 and I didn't do it at university. Then there was the stuff that I did do at university, but I didn't have it when I was 18. And then the last stuff is things that are in here that I've not done at uni and I've not studied when I was doing my A-level either. Brand new kind of stuff. And I wanted to tell you a bit about how I'm trying to deal with these. Well, the first thing that I like to do is just grab this textbook and do some practice and do some studying. So you can see me here, I've taken this textbook and my laptop to Manchester Central Library, having recently moved here from East London, and I'm literally just doing a lot of practice. I'm reading through the examples, I'm trying some of the questions from the exercises, and then I'm also using my laptop to make the slides at the same time, because we all know there's that discrepancy between how the textbook is written and how questions get asked in the exam. So Every time that I'm looking at exam questions in the textbook, I'm always trying to make sure that the slides I'm making for my members are perfectly matching what you could be assessed, because I want things to be sort of the best possible way for you learning that. And then what I've also been doing to kind of tackle some of the things from this book that are in my university notes is going to my university notes, looking back at them and saying, OK, how did I learn this part of number theory or group theory? Is there anything that's in my university notes that will improve on the explanations that are given in this textbook? And there are. There are some really important differences between how things are explained here and how I've done things previously at university. And then I guess the last part of this is thinking of the things that I don't know at all. And I guess those kind of covered that, I'm just learning them and, and really thinking through it quite deeply. When I talk about thinking deeply, it's interesting for the stuff that I don't know about at all, how my brain is trying to process that, process that new information. I'm not sure if anyone's ever experienced this as well, but like before I go to bed, I've maybe had like a long maths day, I've done a bit of relaxing and chilling out in the evening and I close my eyes with the lights off and my brain like switches on and is like thinking about all of the new math stuff that I have been learning about. I don't see it as a problem though, because I kind of wake up in the morning and I have like clarity around some of those new things that I've learned. So maybe before you go to bed, you'll close your eyes and think, hmm, I wonder what tan differentiates to and you'll remember it from, from studying it that day. Hopefully it then shifts it into your long-term memory as well. So I also wanted to give you a bit of a behind the scenes of me making some of those videos. You can see me there with my iPad, sort of scribbling away with my Apple Pencil, and I've got my microphone there. And this isn't something I realized I did, but having filmed myself, I've noticed I do a lot of like looking up and gesticulating with my hands and explaining to, <laughs> to some kind of imaginary student rather than actually just to myself in a room. Um, so I guess that's a reflection on what it's been like for me as a teacher, that every time I make something, I'm always directing it to students who are going to be watching it not just giving sort of blank explanations where without much kind of depth to them at all and then when i get to the end of a module so once i fin once i finish all of fp2 i will be making an everything you need to memorize sort of document one of those big a3 pages that summarizes the whole module i've recently just done one of those for further stats one which has been shared with the members on my channel but for non-members there's obviously all of the normal maths ones for pure stats 
and mechanics and also core pure for further maths year one and further maths year two as well the reason i like that is it just kind of allows me to see all of the module in one place it makes me think i really have learned everything that's there that there's nothing kind of missing that i need to remember about that makes me feel like really reassured when i'm studying that i've kind of got that all in one single place now this has been challenging because I've been trying to juggle making all of this new content alongside other things. Um, I have been visiting schools, I went to a school in North London last week to run some exam sessions for them um, and I've also been preparing some of my own slides and sort of lessons that I'm going to be teaching over the February half term. Um, if you're interested in joining any of those classes in the February half term I've got one on differentiation, one on trigonometry and one on exponentials. The slides are great, I'm really pleased with what I've prepared so if you're interested in joining those sessions do have a look in the description for a link to the Bison Maths box office to get tickets for it. Um, and then I guess probably the biggest challenge, which is the one I didn't really want to talk about because it's me not having taken on my advice that I would have given to a student, is to make sure that you are revising things that you have not looked at for a while. So a while back I made videos for Decision 1, one of the further maths modules, and there are parts of it that I can't really remember how to do some of it. At the time, it made so much sense to me. I was really pleased with the videos that I made. And now when I look at things about some of the algorithms, I can't quite remember the order of how things should go. So this is sort of me documenting this and saying, Mr. Bison, make sure you go back and actually look at previous things. Take your own advice because that will make me feel a lot stronger in decision. It's also just a really interesting idea that teachers, we always tell our students what to do, and now I'm having to take my own advice and finding challenges in that. It's making me a bit more appreciative of the things that you must go through at school with so many teachers telling you how to do this, how to do that, and, and really it's quite tough to take all that advice on board. Um, and so, yeah, really, just let me know what else you want to see from me in this series of these updates. If there's anything that you think actually that would be fantastic to know how you do this could you show us more detail with that please please put it in the comments because i read all of those comments and i would love to take on board any of those suggestions as well so whether i see you as a member on the channel for my options videos whether i see you in one of my february half term classes or perhaps in the future for some of my revision classes in the build up to the summer exams or whether you're just here as a regular subscriber Thank you so much for supporting my channel. I'm so grateful for everybody that comes and supports me and I wish you all of the best of luck with your exams and I will see you in another update soon.